Let's now make some more use of our custom error class by adding a few 404 errors in some of our movie route handler functions. But before we do that, I also want to mention that we could have used this async error handler in our router itself. So for example, if I go to this routes folder, here we have our movies router. So we could have used this async error handler in our movies router itself like this. Instead of doing it inside this movies controller and then passing the async function to it. Okay, so this would have also worked in the exact same way. But I did not do this in this way because if I do it like this, in that way I will have to remember which of my handler functions are actually async functions. Because to this async handler, we are going to pass only the async functions which will return a promise and we are handling the rejected promise in there by using the catch method. Right, so if I go to this async error handler, there we are calling this catch method on the function which we are calling. So we are expecting that this function will return a promise and if it is a rejected promise then we are going to handle that rejected promise using this catch method and that's why this func is only expecting async functions as its value. If we pass a synchronous function here, synchronous function is not going to return a promise and in that case when we call that function it is not going to return a promise so this line of code here it will throw an error. Okay, so here the problem is when we are using this async error handler function in the router there we will have to remember that the function which we are passing to it it should be an async function of course in this case all these functions all these handler functions they are async so it's not going to create any issue if i use it here in this router or if i use it inside the controller it is not going to matter but there will be some routers for which not all the handlers will be async. So in that case, we will really have to remember which handlers are async so that we can wrap it in async error handler function. And so I feel like doing it in the controller is much easier because each time I need to pass a function to this async error handler, I can simply see the signature of the function which I'm passing. And if we are using this async keyword here, then I will know that it is an async function and I can pass it to this async error handler without any doubt. If I do it in the router, that means if I use this async error handler in the router and if I pass a function to it, there first I will have to go to the controller and check if the function which I am passing whether it is async or not. And that for me is not something I want to do. I am just a lazy developer. So that's why I prefer using this function, this async error handler in the controller itself. With that being said, let's now handle some 404 errors here. So in the last lecture, if I go to Postman, when we make a request to this URL, there we are passing some random ID value. So when we are making a request, in the response we are getting this error message and it says it cannot cast this value which we are passing for the ID to an object ID. Okay, so here Mongoose is not able to cast this value to an object ID. But if I pass some valid value here, which can be converted to an object ID, for that let me go ahead and let me first make a request to this movies API. And here I am making a get request. I will just go ahead and I will copy this ID from here. I will paste it here. And here I will go ahead and I will change the last two characters. So something like maybe 56. And now if I make a request with this ID, this should be converted to an object ID. And with this ID, we don't have any movie in the database. So if I make a request here, we should not receive any movie object in the response. And that's what you will see here. So we are getting this response and there this movie property is set to null. But the problem here is if you see the status is success and the status code is 200 OK. But that's not what we really want. If we do not have a movie object with a past movie ID, we might want to return 404 error. So in that case, the status should be fail because it was not able to find any movie object with the given ID and the status code should be 404. And then we should have an error message saying that the movie which you are looking for is not found. Let's see how we can implement it using our own custom error class. So let's go to VS Code. And if I scroll down here, we have this get movie route handler function. So basically this is responsible for sending a movie object in the response with a given ID. Right, and we are writing that code here. So based on the ID, it is going to fetch the movie object and it is going to send it in the response. 
but if we don't have a movie with the given id in that case this movie is set to null and we don't want that in that case we want to return a 404 error so if you see in the response if with the given id if the movie is not found in that case this movie property is set to null and we can use it in the condition so here before sending the response we can check if movie has some value or not so here we can say movie now in javascript null is a falsy value so when we use it inside an if condition it will be automatically converted to false and on that false we can use this not operator to convert it to true okay so if we don't have any movie object in the result from this line of code in that case we want to return 404 in the response so here what we are going to do is we are going to create an error object for that let's create a variable let's call it error and here we are going to instantiate our custom error class okay now in order to use this custom error class we need to import it inside this movies controller so let's scroll up and let's go ahead and let's import the custom error class and here let's pass the path of that file so it is in utils folder so let's move one folder up there let's go to this utils folder and in there we have our custom error class all right now let's scroll down so here we are creating an instance of custom error class now as we have learned earlier this expression is going to call the constructor of custom error and that constructor expects value for message parameter and the status code parameter so for the message parameter here let's simply say movie with that id is not found and the status code here will be 404 and finally let's pass this error object to our global error handling middleware for that here we can call this next function and there we can specify this error as its argument now what this will do is if there is any error then it will skip all other middlewares in the middleware stack and it will directly go ahead and call the global error handling middleware all right now one more important thing to note here is that once the global error handling middleware has been called and it has been executed we want to return from here because we don't want to execute the rest of the lines of code in this function if we don't return from here after the global error handling middleware is called the control will reach to this line and it will again send a response and we don't want that if there is any error we simply want to call the global error handling middleware and from there we will send an error response to the client if there is no error then only we want to execute this code right with this let's go ahead and let's save the changes let's go to postman and now if we make a request to the same url where we are specifying some movie id and we know that this movie id we don't have any movie object in the database so instead of getting this response now we should get an error response and the status code should be 404 let's actually see that let's make a request and now you can see we have this error response there you can see the status is 404 and the message is movie with that id is not found and here also you can see the response status is 404 not found all right now we can use this same code in other handlers also where we are dependent on the id of the movie so for example if i scroll down not in create movie but in update movie we are going to update a movie based on its id so if the user passes an id value with which no movie object is available in that case we want to return an error response saying that the movie with that id is not available okay because if the movie is not available how we are going to update it right so here also i'm going to put that same condition but here we don't have this movie variable instead we have this updated movie so i'll copy it from here and i will pass it here and let's do the same thing in the delete movie as well so here also i'm going to paste that if statement where we are creating this error object and calling the global error handling middleware and here we don't have this updated movie but this expression here this line of code it is going to return us a movie object which has been deleted but if a movie object with that id is not found in that case it is going to return null so let's go ahead and let's assign that value to a variable i'm going to use const keyword for that and let's call it deleted movie okay and here let's pass this deleted movie to this if condition 
and now this should work for delete movie as well as update movie so whenever a user tries to update a movie or delete a movie with the id with which we don't have any movie object in the database we are going to return 404 error now you might ask so if i scroll down here we also have this get all movies handler so you might ask why i am not adding that code in this get all movies because when a user filters the movie data for some of the filters there might be zero results or when a page number which we are requesting does not have any record to show shouldn't we send a 404 error in that case well that's simply because that is not an error the request was correctly received the database correctly searched for the movie and found exactly zero records and so these zero records is what we should be sending back along with the 200 status code that's because again there was not any actual error of course if there is some failure in the database where the database cannot send any record then we have an error and in that case mongoose will automatically throw an error which will be handled by the global error handling middleware we don't have to do anything in that case all right so in this lecture we learned how to handle 404 errors from our route handler functions using our custom error class this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day